Hey everybody, Jeremy Blum here with an update on the Arduino contest that I've been running for the last month or so with Element 14. The contest wrapped up on Monday, uh, Valentine's Day, and we have a winner. So now I want to show you all the videos that were submitted to the project, and I'll give you a little bit of commentary on them. And what I'll do is I'll show you the third place winner, second place winner, and then the first place winner. And the first place winner, of course, got a really nice soldering station courtesy of Element 14. So I'll show you those top three videos first based on the number of people who liked them on the Element 14 website. And then I'll show you all the other videos that were submitted to me on YouTube in no particular order. Every single one of these videos was impressive. I'll give a little bit of commentary in each one. I thought they were amazing. You guys did a fantastic job, and I really appreciate everyone who submitted videos. And hopefully you'll continue submitting videos to me in the future as you do more projects, and I'll try to showcase them whenever I can. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at all the videos. In third place, we have Adrian's really superb breathalyzer video. He uh, made a system that's a breathalyzer for detecting alcohol content on your breath. It has an alcohol sensor, an LCD display that displays a message, LEDs that light up to indicate your uh, level of intoxication, and a speaker that will play a sound if it determines that you're relatively drunk. This was a really great project, very well executed, and of course the video is made even better by the fact that he did several shots of tequila during it, and still continued to uh, film it quite nicely. So great job, Adrian. This was a really, really nice project, and I really particularly enjoyed watching this one. In second place, we have a rocket launch controller by Brad and his son William. This is a really nice project because it was great to see uh, that a guy who's really obviously very into engineering and electronics got his kids involved in the project and, and they helped build it and it was very obvious that they put a lot of time and effort into this. It was a very well uh, finished product. You could tell that the enclosure at the end was had a lot of care put into it and it was very much finalized uh, and the keypad entry system for the rocket with individualized launch codes all really really nice stuff uh, I was really impressed by this project uh, I, I couldn't have done anything better myself for sure this was really nice and a great thing to get kids involved with it's always nice when parents are getting their kids into engineering uh, and showing them how much fun it could be so great work on this Brad and your kids you, you guys did a great job and of course, with the greatest number of likes on Element 14's website, we have our number one finishing video, and they'll be winning a really nice soldering station from Element 14. This was Nathan's DIY jet engine project. He used the Arduino in this video to monitor turbine RPM in the jet engine, display an LCD screen, and then also monitors the RPM level and can shut down the system in the event that it detects an overspeed uh, exception. So this is really nice. This is an ideal example of how you can use the Arduino to do industrial level work, uh, something that is actually highly reliant on safety, uh, which was a really nice implementation, especially for a science fair. So great job, Nathan. I can tell the project looks very uh, finished, and I hope you guys won the science fair as well. Great job. One of my personally favorite videos in the submissions that we got was Easton's control glove. So Easton built this glove that you wear in your hand and it has five flex sensors and you adorn the glove and then it wirelessly controls an animatronic hand that can be whatever distance away from it because it's wireless with XP's. This was really nice. I'm of course particularly invested in the project because I've been talking to Easton about it for several months now and I gave him some advice a little, a little while back on some programming stuff and some motor control for the Arduino. And if you look at the glove, you'll actually notice that the flex sensors are the same ones that I used on my Sudo glove control system that I built a, a few months ago now, and you can go watch a video of that. So this is very close to home to me. I love glove control interfaces. And Easton did a really, really nice job with this. It looks really finished. The hand moves perfectly. It's really just a spectacular project. Great job, Easton, and thanks a lot for submitting it. Next up, we have a garage door opening system built by Thomas Sloan. I'm particularly fond of this project because it combines a ridiculous number of technologies to do one task, which I love. I love combining a million things at once. He's got MySQL as database backend in here, C Sharp running on a server, uh, it being controlled by an Android phone, an Arduino and a NetDuino all involved in this system. Uh, so there's obviously a lot of points of interconnect here which can make debugging very difficult for a system like this. So it's very impressive that he got it to work and in the video you can see it works just perfectly. He punches in his code and the garage door opens just like you would expect it to. And it's just a really nice clean system and it, it works flawlessly and it does exactly what he says it does. And uh, bringing together all these components into one cohesive element uh, is really really nice aspect to it. So a great job on this.
This next project from Scott Harris is a homebrew Arduino control shield for RGB Christmas lights as well as the spectrum analysis that he's doing on a chip on his board to analyze the signal coming in from sound and use it to control GE color effects Christmas lights that he hacked to be controlled by this Arduino. And it makes a really nice uh, Christmas lights effect. Uh, he does a very good job of syncing it up to the music. And you can tell a lot of effort went into etching his custom PCB for the shield. So great work on this, Scott. It's a really cool project, and I love the way the lights turned out. The last video that was submitted to me via YouTube is a inverse kinematically controlled robotic arm from Karan and Amaraj. And this is a really cool project. Unfortunately, they didn't submit it to the Element 14 contest, but they submitted it to my YouTube channel, so I figured I'd feature it. And this is really neat because you feed the arm X, Y, and Z position values, and the controller, the Arduino controller on the arm automatically figures out how it has to move its motors, uh, its various degrees of freedom, to get the end point on the arm to that XYZ position in space. And this allows them to do some really cool stuff like trace out perfect circles with the arm, move back and forth in the X and Y coordinate plane without actually having to control each motor individually. So this is actually some really cool algorithms they have going on here. And it's a uh, great work. So great job, guys. Very cool. One more time, thanks to everyone who submitted videos to this project. Again, they were all really, really awesome. I'm really impressed with the work you guys are doing, and I look forward to seeing more of it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching the sampling that I put on here, and uh, you can go check out the links for all the videos and where you can see them in the description below this video. And of course, I'll have another Arduino tutorial out uh, this Monday for you, tutorial number, let's see, eight now, and uh, it should be a lot of fun. So I'll see you guys in a few days. Thanks for watching.